Hi guys. Okay, welcome to another lesson in advanced woodcraft. Today we're going to be talking with our cook set. How we're going to prepare our meals. What are we doing and, and what we're going to carry and how we're going to organize it. Okay. As you've seen in this series, we've talked about how to smooth it. How to put that quick deploy tarp up, that quick deploy ridge line. How to pack our rucksack so that it comes out in the order that I need. How to set up my shelter, that type deal. Well, now we're talking about what we need for meals. Now, for this one, we're going to be talking predominantly about a single person, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to have a set, pre-set up and focused to our needs, okay? So what I'm about to show you is not going to be strictly the end-all, do-all. You're an individual. Your needs are going to vary greatly from mine. And so what do I carry in order to do? Now in the past I have talked about a canteen cup cook set. And that is simply a U.S. Army canteen, a cup, a spoon, the clip-on stove that goes to the bottom of the canteen cup. And I'm going to be cooking off a fire or a trangi or something like that for immersion heating predominantly. Building on that, let's step it up a little bit, but where I want to be able to carry some components with me to give me some variety once I get out here. Other than a pre-made up meal of like a can of spaghetti or an MRE or something, I want to be able to generate stuff in camp, like carrying some sort of uh, powdered muffin mix where you just add water or powdered cake mix or something where I just add water where I can mix that up, put it on a stick, spiral it up, and put it up here on the front of the fire and cook it pretty easily. So those type of focus kits. Now what we're going to do today, we're going to talk about this kit that I've made up. Now this is relatively small and compact and this has got a lot of different functions covered in this one kit. Now there is some food in here and other food could be added into here but it's also a lot of raw components that can, can be combined to make a variety of things. Okay. Now, this is going to utilize a the Pathfinder one quart bush pot, and the this uh, pantry set comes from Camp Craft. Does that now? Pathfinder also makes a similar set bag and set. So you could get it from Pathfinder, or you could get it from Camp Craft, or you could, like I've done, combine from different things, because I already had this set, and then I got the Pathfinder Quart Bush Pot. So let's begin. First, it's in a cover that's in waterproof canvas. That means this has got a lot of uses other than the fact, one, it's safe to keep my stuff kind of dry and from blown rain, etc., or water, etc. Two, it is sewn really well, so it could be used to carry water. At where I have demonstrated using my haversack to carry water, I could take this and carry water from a water source back to camp to put into some sort of larger container or whatever. So it could be used for that as well. First up, we have three steel tent stakes. Okay, those become important in a minute. Next, I've got one of the folding cups. Now, it doesn't have to be this exact component. Again, you mix and match what works for you. But I like this cup because when it folds out, see how large it is. It's a bowl to eat out of. It's a big mug to drink out of on a cold night when you're wanting to make a big cup of coffee or a big cup of hot chocolate or soup or stew or whatever. So I can eat out of it as a bowl. I can also utilize it this way. So it is a force multiplier inside my kit, and it stores compactly. Next out comes the one quart bush pot that I painted in a recent video. I like this size because it's more than enough for me for one person. Not only is it a little coffee pot, which means I can heat water for various meals, I can also make hot chocolate, hot tea, hot soup, hot stuff like that for me. It's also big enough in diameter to use as an immersion heater, like we've talked about in earlier videos. 
So let's say I want to carry a can of uh, SpaghettiOs. I can take that in a quart freezer bag. Note I said freezer bag. Get a good name brand. They're tougher. I can dump the canned food into it, squeeze the air out, and then set it inside of this with a pot of water and bring it to a boil. Whenever it's heated up after 10 minutes of boiling, I simply pour the excess water out, open up the bag, and eat it out of the bag, leaving me only a dirty bag. My pot's still clean and everything, so I'm rotating through, see? I don't have a dirty cook pot. If I just dump the SpaghettiOs in there and heat it, I do, but then I gotta clean the pot. But if I put them by immersion heating, into a disposable Ziploc bag, I can just dispose of the Ziploc. If I've got a fire, throw it in the fire, it'll burn up like that. And I got no garbage to tote out. The can, yes. But you see what I'm saying? It can be other things like an immersion heat that you wouldn't heat on a fire. Some sort of microwave food or whatever could be heated this way. It's got a rebated lid. I really like that because it means I can put hot coals on here for baking. Now inside of it, like you saw in earlier videos, I have prepackaged, uh, rolled up, measured out things of instant camp taters. I've got two sets of those right there, so there's at least two meals. I have another small fold cup that's used for various things, but it's a small cup like the bigger one. Now out of what came with the set, I've got these screw top tins, and this one is spices. Inside of here, I have a small bag, and also I've got things of sugar, pre-made up, like you get when you're getting coffee and stuff, you know, them little packages of sugar, packages of salt, packages of pepper, like that we put in here. If I'm using some sort of meal, Let's say I'm going to combine these elements and make a biscuit that I'm going to put mayonnaise in. Well, I put me a, one of them packages of mayonnaise in here like you get to put on a hamburger. Add those in there. Little bitty bag. This little bitty bag was just used for carrying something else, and I recycled it. I went down to the dollar store, and they had these little bitty jars for a buck for like eight of them. Notice that one's paprika. This is cayenne pepper. There's one full of salt. There's one with crazy spice, I call it, which is a home blend. And then one of pepper. That's more than enough for about three days worth of meals where I've got enough to season with, to spice it up or whatever. At the same time, I'm not carrying an excessive amount. I don't need it. This is just for me. I'm just trying to doctor the flavor a little bit. That's it. And all of that on a little bitty bag that goes into one of these tins. That protects it. Make sure all them little jars lay down flat. Keeps it from rattling around. You notice how it sits in the lid. And I put the lid back on. Now, next up, Bisquick. With Bisquick, I can make pancake. I can make hoe cake. I can make a biscuit. I can add sugar to it and make a sweet roll. I can, you know what I'm saying. Just look at Bisquick recipes. There's a million and one of them things. And this was a huge innovation in early 1900s of being able to start with this component and by adding a little bit to it turned into something radically different. So Bisquick is a Swiss army knife of the cooking field. It's easy for me to make bread in the field. It's easy for me to make a pancake in the field. It's easy for me to make all kinds of stuff. With a screw on lid I don't have to worry about it popping off and there's my pre-measured amount right there. It holds about, I think it's close to a cup or a little under a cup. More than enough for me to make a for my single usage right there. And then there's the pot. Now that just drops into the pot. Two drop in, then I drop my little cup in. Then I take one of my camp taters, put it against the wall, and one of my camp taters goes into that little pot. That cut folded cut just like that and the lid snaps on. 
as before. This means that I've got a coffee pot. I've got a hot water pot. I can use it as a boiler to boil and cook meals out of or to mix up and make, etc. I can turn it on its side and turn it into a little, uh, by flaring out the legs, run a stick through these legs, fold the handle back, set it like that as a reflector oven, and I can bake a biscuit or bread inside of it. A lot of uses from that little bitty pot. Now, also in the bag, I have a longer wooden spoon. I have the little bitty Caplica cup spoon. And then I've got a little bitty knife and a fork for eating. Those will take care of all my eating and mixing needs. And that measurement right there is one tablespoon. So I know how much to measure with that. Underneath it, I carry one of these German like that. It's got an O-reading seal in it. Now what is this for? Butter. Butter does not, salted, listen to me, salted butter does not require refrigeration for a couple of days. It'll get a little soft, but it will not go bad. Salted butter. Notice that word, salted butter. So I could carry this camping to be able to fry in it, season with it, Combine with the big squick to make biscuits or whatever. How about I don't want to carry butter? Lard. Suppose we're going out here and I'm going to be uh, going for fish and things that I'm going to roast on a spit. Or that I want to fry up. I'm also going to carry a small skillet with me. There's a supply of lard I can carry. In something that seals up tight and will sit underneath everything and keep it from becoming a mess in my pack. And the final thing in here in the very bottom, I've simply got a little cookie tin or mint tin I got from Christmas years ago that I Japan, put in a fire and blackened it. Inside of it are things of tea, uh, tea, stuff like that. Tea, sugar, stuff like that. I can put um, Lipton tea packages in there. I can put a thing of hot cocoa in there, etc. It's thin. I just picked this up. I'm recycling, repurposing. And then I've got the empty bag. Okay? Now, I said the three-tenth steaks. What are we going with the three-tenth steaks? Let me show you right quick. Okay. I take my bush pot and I put it down on the dirt and press it straight down and give a little turn. And that will give me a circular imprint show me what the bottom of my cup, my can looks like. Following that outline, I will then put my three tent stakes with hooks facing inward around to serve as a pot stand, just like that. Now I can take pine cones, twigs, or whatever, and right in here, build a small fire. And once I get it going, I can set the pot up there and be able to feed stuff underneath it and have a ready, stable place to put my pot without having to make any big muss or fuss or use big wood. Bark fire, small twigs, a little bit of kindling fire will do just fine to handle this and heat this up. With the handles pulled back and locked, it's still going to balance right like that. All I got to do is just make sure my three are level, push them in, make sure they're level, stable, and then build my fire and set my pot on it. Pretty simple, huh? And when I get done, that's all that's left. So as you can see, this makes a focused little small kit for my use. I'm coming out, out of the gate with having two meals, the camp taters, right there. So if I don't get anything else, I've got two meals. I've got Bisquick down there in the bottom that I can make at least two meals out of that of biscuits, or a pancake or bread of some kind to tie me over. So that little bit of can right there has got really a weekend's worth of nibbles for me where I didn't get lucky and get a squirrel or a rabbit or whatever. There's enough food there to get me through. Now if I augment this with rice dish, pasta dish, something like that, there's still enough room in this bag where I can substitute. See, If I take my little cup out, there's enough room for me to put 
a measured amount about that much if something else was inside that pot other than those taters. See, so it'd be a couple more meals than that. That and whatever else I carry will be more than enough to get me through. With the tent stakes, I have a ready-made setup where I can build a fire and have this raised up. Usually I just put the sticks in the bee. However, there are times this is actually better because what if I just want to quick? I don't want to have to build big. Like I said, I will take these three, put them in the ground, put pine cones underneath and a little bit of shavings, get it going, and have a little pine cone fire enough to heat me up a pot of whatever for lunch, for, su for quick. Just don't want to stop long, and therefore don't build a big fire, a little bitty twig fire that I can feed with this. And these, all as you can see, just lay down flat, so therefore there's no problem. Hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Please leave any questions or comments below. And if you like this content, please hit that like button for me to help feed the algorithm. There will be more videos coming. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie. Wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.